Hello dear student, I am Mr. Sam Amdouni. This video is for grade 7 and will help you better understand chapter 1 which is design fundamentals. Let's start. So by the end of this chapter, you should be able to explain the importance of design and technology, list some factors affecting design, differentiate between good and bad designs. Here you can see a smartphone and it is an immediate application of design and technology which we are going to discuss later. You can see a very elegant car, smart watches and a house which is situated in California. So all of these four examples, they are the absolute application of design technology and I am sure that these four products are very appealing to you. So what makes these products appealing? Appealing means attractive. Here you have another example. So we have a telephone which has two versions. The first one is an old one and the second one is a modern one. Which one would you choose? Let us carry out this simple activity. What is the name of this product? So this is a hair dryer. What is the function of this product? The function of this product is to dry your hair. What materials have been used to make this product? We can say it is made out of plastics, metals or even rubber. Who designed this product? This product must have been designed by a product designer. So, we have made reference to these terms which are design and technology. What does design mean? The design is the activity of creating products and services by using, changing or adapting technology. What is the role of a designer? A designer creates, plans, builds, draws, innovates, solves problems as well as brings changes to existing products to satisfy needs of users or customers. Here, both terms have been explained. Design and designer. You can pause the screen to note it down in your copybook. Next we have the definition for technology. So technology refers to all materials, machines, tools and or devices which make tasks easier and simpler for people. There are so many examples around us. For example, a kitchen knife helps us to cut vegetables. A printer helps to print paper. The television helps to watch movies. And so on. Importance of design and technology Design technology has contributed to find better and quicker ways to solve problems and come up with effective solutions, which means that, on a daily basis, designers try to solve many problems around the world to make the lives of people easier and better. Let us carry out activity 1 on page 2. So you have to look at the table and you have to insert the correct answer. The first product's name, we can write clothes. The function is to keep us warm. Materials used, we can write cotton or wool. Who designed the products, we can say tailor. The second product, we can write building. The function is to give us shelter. The materials used are concrete and metal. Who designed the products? Architects. The third product is a car. The function is to travel from one place to another. Materials used, we can write glass, metal, rubber. Who designed the products? We can write engineer. The fourth and final product is an aeroplane. The function is to travel around the world. 
materials used we can be more specific here we can write aluminium who designed the products engineers we're going to look at some practical applications of designing technology at home so here you have a very simple task where you have to make a list of products you use every day at home so here you can see there are so many products that you can find at your place can you identify some of these so what you are going to do we're going to write a list of around 10 products that you use at home you can note this down in your copybook. Designing technology in the protection of the environment. Technologies have decreased the dependency on traditional sources of producing electricity. Traditional sources of producing electricity mean that we use non-renewable sources of producing energy such as bagasse, coal or heavy oil. These contribute to greenhouse effects, which is not good for the environment. List of examples for environmentally friendly technologies that are generally used to generate electricity. These are solar panels, wind and wave turbines as well as tidal turbines. We can see the application of solar panels in many households as well as we have a wind farm at Rochnoir. We can also mention solar water heaters which use solar energy to heat water. In the photo, you can see large wind turbines. These use the movement of the wind, which is called aeolic movement, to produce electricity. In this photo, you can see the use of solar panels which are also known as photovoltaic cells to produce electricity. Here is another example of the use of solar energy which is the solar water heater. Here you can see electric cars which have zero emission and can be charged to travel. DT in the transport sector. How did DT contribute to the transport sector? By inventing faster, safer, efficient and comfortable means of transport. We can see the evolution below from ox cart to horse cart to steam train to ancient cars and modern cars. Now we can say that from ox cart to modern cars there have been great improvement in the design and application of technology. We can see that nowadays cars are very reliable, safe, energy efficient and more comfortable. So here we have already completed activity 1 on page 2. You can carry out activity 2 on page 4. Next topic in this chapter is factors affecting design. Designers need to be very conversant with these factors so as to design very good products. These factors are function, material, appearance, safety, environmental impact, size, cost, and production method. We can apply these factors to any product. It can be from your pen, to your shoes, to your water bottle, to your television, to buildings, to almost everything. So what is a function? The function means the purpose of the product. For example, the purpose of a pen is to be used to write. The purpose of a water bottle is to carry water. Material. From which materials is the product made? We take example of your table, which can be made out of wood, also metals, or the chair on which you sit, it can be made out of plastics. Appearance. 
Appearance refers to the shape, color, form or texture. All the products that exist, they have a particular shape, they have a particular color, form and texture. The texture depends on the material which has been used. The shape usually depends on the function of the product. For example, the water bottle which we mentioned earlier, it has a cylindrical shape. Rarely you will see a water bottle which looks like a cuboid. Safety refers to all the measures that have been taken to make sure that the user is safe. Environmental impact Possible positive or negative effects of the product on the environment. For example, after having used your bot water bottle, at some point, you will have to dispose it. Whether it is good for the environment depends on how you have disposed of it. If you simply have thrown it in the bin, then it will go to the landfill, which is going to have a very negative impact on the environment. But if you have recycled, then the bottle will have a new life. So, you have reduced the impact of the pollution on the environment, therefore it is a good thing. Size refers to the dimensions of the product. Cost refers to the cost of producing the product and production method. Production method refers to the processes involved to produce the product. Pause the screen and please copy the table. We are going to look at three examples of how factors affect the design. The first one is that of a water bottle. So the function of the water bottle is to contain water and to drink from it. The appearance, it has a cylindrical appearance. Safety, there are no sharp corners. It is smooth to touch and also the bottle itself it is not toxic lifespan it can last 5000 years because plastic it is not a biodegradable material materials used so pet plastic has been used to make the water bottle and the cup is made of polypropylene production method Plastic blow molding process has been applied to make water bottles. The regular size of this bottle is 90 mm by 320 mm and the environmental impact depends on how the product has been disposed. You must pull the screen and copy this in your copy book. The next product is a stool. The function of the stool is you use it to sit on it. The appearance, it has a square shaped seat and long legs. Safety, there are no sharp edges, therefore you will not be injured while using the product. Lifespan, it can last up to 10 years. Materials, plywood has been used for the seat and meranti, which is another wood, has been used for the legs. Production method. Wood joints such as mortise and tenon have been used to make the stool. Size for the stool are as follows 300 mm by 30 mm by 80 mm. This is referred to the length, breadth, and height of the stool. Environmental impact. Since wood is a natural material, so it has minimal to no impact on the environment. Pull the screen and copy this slide. The third and last product which we are going to look at is a kitchen trolley. The function of this product is to transport food and drink from one place to another. The appearance, it has a good wood texture, smooth and rounded edges as well as good finish. Safety, there are no sharp edges and non-toxic material has been used to make this product. Lifespan, it can last around 3 to 5 years, and but unfortunately can be affected by water. Materials, 
Fine has been used to make the body of the trolley. Production method, screws are used to assemble the different parts. The size is as follows, 1200 millimeters, which is the length, 1400 millimeters, which is the height, and 800 millimeters, which is the breadth. Environmental impact, since the wood is a natural timber as the previous example, it does not have any impact on the environment. We have reached the last segment of chapter 1. This is good and bad design. So, the characteristics of good design are as follows. A good design is innovative, makes a product understandable, is long-lasting, is environmentally friendly and is attractive. So here we are going to look at a few examples of products and you will be asked to identify whether it is a good design or a bad design. So the first example is an umbrella. Do you think it is a good design or a bad design? I let you decide. This is the second example which is a rubber boot. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? The third example is a chopping board. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? The fourth example is a stackable chair. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? The fifth example is a broom. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? The sixth example is a teapot. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? The seventh example is a cooking pot. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? The eighth example is a chair. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? The ninth example is a regenerative candle holder. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? The tenth example is a maze grater. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? The eleventh example is of a lady's shoe. Do you think it is a good design or bad design? So, these eleven products, some of them you have found to be good designs and some you have found to be bad designs. I am very sure that you have got all of them very right. So, what is the difference between good design and bad design? So a good design usually has a good appearance and achieves the purpose whereas a bad design may have a strange appearance and does not satisfy the basic function of the product. So we can easily identify good designs and bad designs. I'll reach the end of this chapter. If you have any questions, you can meet me personally and ask the questions here.